What's up? I'm Jim Barry. Welcome to the latest edition of Miami Life, the show that looks at life in and around South Florida. Compelling topics, interesting people, you'll find them both right here. Well, next Wednesday, the Miami Dolphins will host their second annual Jason Jenkins Day of Service. It is named after their beloved Vice President of Community Affairs, who died tragically two years ago. Our person of interest today is his widow, Elizabeth Jenkins. She now carries the torch for his biggest charity initiative with a new sense of destiny and purpose. When Jason Jenkins died two years ago, the Dolphins needed someone to step into his huge shoes and lead the fundraising effort for their enormously successful Dolphins Cancer Challenge. That's when team president Tom Garfinkel approached Jenkins' widow, Elizabeth, with a bright idea. What are your thoughts about maybe taking over his board chair? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a, little, that's a little much. I was like, let me, let me table that and see really if I could wrap my head around it. And she was skeptical at first. More skeptical if I could actually do it, if I had the skill set. So what convinced you? I went to church and my pastor gave a very impassioned speech about um, if God keeps bringing something into your life, maybe you should say yes. So Elizabeth Jenkins took on the role. At first, it was tough returning to Hard Rock Stadium where her husband had collapsed and died of a blood clot at the age of 47. I knew exactly where his office was, so when I would walk up to the stadium, I would look up at his window, and I will be honest, I, I looked for him. I was hoping that he would be there. It's still inconceivable to me um, that he's not here. Like, I would definitely say for the first year, you know, the kids and I just pretended he was at a away game. You know, it was easy for us to do that because he was gone so often that we could just pretend, and we did. The Dolphins have wrapped their arms around Jenkins and her three young children, and in return, she has become every bit the community advocate her late husband once was. The Dolphins Cancer Challenge attracts people bonded by a sense of loss that cancer inevitably brings. Jenkins believes her own loss has steeled her for this role. I think People are comfortable talking to me because I really wear my emotions on my sleeve. I have no problem talking about the uncomfortable things. Um, death is a very uncomfortable topic for a lot of people. I don't have any problems talking about that. Grief is a very difficult topic to have with people. I'm comfortable talking about people's, gr people's grief. What do you tell them? Um, to feel it, to be honest. Um, and I'm still going through it, so I'm not saying I'm on the other side. And I don't think there is an other side to it. You just sort of, um, you hit sort of milestones where you're comfortable in it. Jenkins admits reaching this point has not been easy. She saw how her husband had the ear of the Dolphins billionaire owner, Stephen Ross, but the eye for meeting countless needs of those in the community. How could he be taken from this world so soon? I just, I it couldn't wrap my head around the whys. And, and now? I don't think I'm, I fully understand the why it was him, but I do very much believe that um, there is no bad situation that God will not turn for good. Life is not always roses and rainbows. Sometimes you're gonna go through some seasons of life where things are hard and I think we, as collectively as a society, have seen hard as a bad thing, where you can always flip it on its head and say hard is teaching you a little bit of grit to get through it. This year's Jason Jenkins Day of Service will land on what would have been his 50th birthday. This unprecedented outreach effort of Dolphins employees and volunteers unites people who come from far and wide. People ask me about Miami all the time who don't, who don't live here, and they say, it looks like this, this great melting pot. I said, well, it's more like a quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but often true. However, Jason Jenkins believed that Miami's patchwork of communities could be connected in meaningful ways. Do you have, share that belief? I do, I do. I mean, I am multiracial. You know, my father is white, my mom is Korean, my kids are black. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it is a lot, you know, I think there's uniquenesses that you have to highlight. I think that's a good thing. Um, I think there are way more things that we have in common with each other than different. 
At a public celebration of Jason's life two years ago, Elizabeth Jenkins challenged everyone there to channel her husband's giving spirit. Now, she is beginning to see her words that day in an even bigger light. I wonder if his passing was a moment that was passing the torch to others to start taking it on on their own. We're in an area that maybe they never thought they could. Including you. Including me. Yeah. Including me. Yes. A uh, confession from me. Yes. I have never ridden in the DCC. What? <laughs> I'm a tennis player, okay? Okay. <laughs> I know that sounds like an alibi, and maybe it is. But uh, Elliot Rodriguez has been busting my chops for years, so I broke down, and I said this on the air, so I'm, I'm saying it again. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride this year. You are. Yeah. I'm very happy. Do you know what you're riding? Not yet. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to actually put that on <laughs> <Not> the <yet>. air. <laughs> The Dolphins will host their annual Jason Jenkins Day of Service on Wednesday, October 30th. You can learn more about volunteer opportunities on our website, cbsmommy.com. Just search Jason Jenkins. Up next on Miami Life, we're still talking Dolphins, but this time we're talking about their quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa, who says he is ready to play again. But should fans cheer or fear this news? I've been working my butt off as if I was getting ready to play every game for every week. Tua's concussion history gives some folks pause about him continuing to play football. We'll talk a lot more about it as Miami Life returns. The Miami Dolphins could be getting their quarterback back this weekend. Tua Tungabailoa is practicing again after being cleared to play, he hopes, with eyes on getting back under center for Sunday's home game against the Arizona Cardinals. Some people wonder if Tua should take the field again, given his history of concussions. But the quarterback made it very clear this week he intends to play. Here is CBS News Miami Sports anchor Mike Cunho. For me, this is what I love to do. This is what makes me happy, and I'm going to do it. That's it. In his first press conference in more than a month, Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungabaloa was noticeably upset with the reality that he has become the poster child for concussions in the NFL. I just think this is only becoming a thing just because of what, what ended up happening two years ago for, for myself within the sport. I hate that it, it's happened, but we don't look at boxers the same way. We don't look at hockey players the same way. But I just think because of what happened and the magnitude that, that had, um, that it's becoming more of an issue uh, here in the league. Over the last few weeks, we've seen Tua engaged on game day, all the while seeking the opinions from outside medical experts. He's been given the green light to safely return to football. The next step is to clear the league's concussion protocols. That process begins Wednesday when he practices for the first time since being placed on injured reserve. I, what I do know is I think the team did what was best in the interest of me, knowing that I'm a competitor and, uh, you know, given what the doctors have told me, that having a substantial amount of time uh, to rest and recover uh, would have been good for me. I think they did what was best in terms of um, protecting myself, uh, you know, from myself. Tua says being a spectator on Sundays was frustrating. He's been staying busy throwing and diving into game plans, but he could be playing again as soon as this Sunday against the Cardinals and is comfortable with the risk of getting another head injury. You get up off of the bed the wrong way, you potentially could risk you spraining your ankle. There's, there's just risk in any, any and everything, and I'm willing to play the odds. As for the calls for him to consider retirement, he says he didn't pay any attention to it. And for those concerned, he could get another concussion. I appreciate your concern. I really do. Um, I love this game, and I love it to the death of me. That's it. All right, let's take a deeper dive into this right now. Joining me is the guy who just did that story. He was out at Dolphins training at camp, Mike Cuno. And boy, Tua seems almost defiant, Mike, when talking about continuing to play football. Yeah, he is. I, I think he's really upset with the fact that this has become his story, his narrative as a quarterback in the NFL. 
Like it or not, unfortunately for Tua, he's kind of become the concussion guy yep. in the league. Look, every time he takes one of these head injuries, they just happen to be on Monday Night Football, on Thursday Night Football, basically in prime time. So certainly they're amplified, no doubt about it. But for good reason. I mean, these are scary hits he is taking. There's a reason why the team put him on IR, as you heard him say himself. The team has to protect me from myself sometimes because yep. he's such a strong competitor. Yeah. And it, it was a smart move to sit him down for a few weeks. But, you know, I'm listening to him, and I'm wondering, mm -hmm. obviously this is two of the player talking, yeah. but is, is this two of the husband Two of the father, two young children talking? Well, he said the only person he talked to during this whole thing was his wife. He kind of kind of alluded to the fact that, no, you know, my parents didn't get involved in this process. It was basically yeah. him talking to his wife, talking to the doctors, talking to head coach Mike McDaniel. He's been given the all clear to, to play from some of these outside doctors. So that's given him the clearance for himself to go out there and play. Now, right. the next step, as we saw, is he's got to pass the league protocols next that will allow him to play Sunday against the Cardinals all right well certainly we wish the best for him listen I noticed that Devon Achan who yeah. also had a concussion came back and played mm -hmm. and he had this funny looking helmet uh, the, was guardian, it the guardian cap. helmet yeah, yeah guardian cap which made him look like a Klingon <laughs> yeah but uh, that's supposed to protect you more why doesn't Tua wear that yeah that's a personal choice says he doesn't want to wear it um, if you watch practice any practice video of ours you'll see Basically, everyone's got this cap on during practice. It's not league mandated. Uh, Mike McDaniel says he's not going to make anyone wear it if they, if they don't want to. So this is purely a personal choice yeah. for Tua. Achan uh, Ward, after he suffered a concussion a couple weeks ago against the Patriots, maybe it's just a comfort thing. Maybe it's a it's a mental thing where you just you, you feel more comfortable, more protected. Yeah. But in Tua's case, and maybe. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It's just he, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to wear it. Uh, so I, I, that's that's about as he didn't want to look to. different. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, mean I, I don't know if I want to go that far and say that everyone has the reasons for wearing yeah. or not wearing it. There's only a few players in the league wearing it. But Tua wants to roll without it. Yeah, well, clearly that's what he plans to do, and we certainly wish him the best. But, look, uh, all of us saw the mm -hmm. hits that he has taken, yeah. and we've seen the reaction. We've seen his body uh, curl up, mm -hmm. and it's a frightening thing. And many people have suggested that we're more concerned about how we feel about Tua taking the hits than Tua is himself. Yeah, that fencing position certainly is a jarring look yeah. when you're watching on TV. And, again, these hits continue to happen on primetime TV. So he's getting the most, uh, the biggest audience, I guess, when these concussions happen. And I think that's so jarring. And part of the reason why you see such this groundswell of media attention, these, you know, sports shows will spend entire segments on should Tua retire. We saw coaches around the league, Antonio Pierce from the Raiders getting asked. Even hey, Nick should, Saban. Hey, right, about. should Tua retire? These are guys on the other side of the country yeah. who have nothing to do with the Dolphins getting asked these questions. It's it's a tough spot for Tua, yeah. and you can tell he's not a big fan of where where the perception of him in the league is. Well, one thing he should do very quickly is slide Tua, slide. He did, please. he did mention that he's got to play smarter. He knows this is a professional business, football. Yeah. This is an organization, this is a franchise. He is the face of it. He gets paid the most. He has to protect himself and do a better job of doing it. Let's hope he does. Mm -hmm. Hope he's healthy for the rest of the year and beyond. Yep. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot. Yep. All right, still to come, the buzz on bees. This is kind of breaking news. Right now, I am holding a queen bee in my hand, which is terrifying and cool at the same time. It's from this. That's Morgan Reiner, who dropped in on a South Florida beekeeper who safely relocates bees. Guy really loves his job. Ooh, makes me skittish just looking at all those bees. Miami Life, back in just a moment. All right, let's be honest. Some people see a bee, oh boy, and start running the other way. But bees serve a key role in our ecosystem. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner introduces us to one South Florida beekeeper who saves the bees, saves all the honey, and is full of uh, buzzy bits of information. Just in these two individual hives, we have over 100,000 bees. Gene Navarro truly loves bees. So a very interesting fact is 
The color of the comb indicates the age of the hive. And is full of fun facts. The queen can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. It's a passion he learned from his father, who started his own pest control company in South Florida. But Navarro wanted to take it a step further. So he continued his education at the University of Florida Agricultural Department to learn about beekeeping, and now instructs others on how to safely remove a hive. Homeowners usually call and they tell us they have bees. This house in Hollywood has a compost bin in the backyard that a beehive took over. The smoke blocks the, the pheromones of bees. Bees communicate through smell. Smoke from pine needles he collects at job sites allows him to work at ease with these bees. This bee vac is very gentle for the bees. Then he starts removing the honeycomb from the bin and rebuilding the hive in this box, all while scanning for the queen bee. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the queen. You found it? Yes, yes. So very interesting, she is beautiful, she is very large, and she is very thick. Wait for it. Notice the longest one in that particular cavity. With queen bee in hand, the other bees follow her smell into the makeshift box, and it's ready for transport. This is step two of the process. They relocate all of these bees here to Homestead where they rebuild the hive, and take a look at this. This is the goal, the beautiful outcome of honey. The bee rescue in Homestead has 80 hives right now. That's millions of bees. We were then harvest this honey. We were extract it, and then we were able to bottle this honey, and then we were to give it to other people around us. And he gives the wax away to other beekeepers. For the wax, we actually hand it to other beekeepers that are very tailored into the wax uh, candle process. Candles, lip balms, no part goes to waste. They pollinate what we eat, our produce, our food, a lot of plants. So because they're so essential and they are physical um, pollinators, it's why they're so important. So now, as part of what we do, we can then give back to the environment. So if you're thinking about spraying a beehive in your house or business, take a look at that. Navarro has a message for you. I, I want to say there's a lot more to the bees um, that goes into them, but I think it's important to just uh, approach it with care. In Homestead, Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. <laughs> CBS, I heard you, Morgan. That was fascinating, but boy, that's a job I could never do. We'll be right back. Right, hard to believe, but the holiday season is fast approaching, but this is a bummer. One of South Florida's most popular seasonal pastimes won't be part of the festivities any longer. Santa's Enchanted Forest, the popular Christmas theme park, will not be operating this year. The popular attraction, which was in Medley last year after nearly 40 years of Tropical Park, made the announcement on its Instagram page. It says that it's taking 2024 off to reflect on, quote, four decades of memories and a plan for the future. Hope we do see them again. All right, time to see what the Miami Life audience has to say about some recent stories that we've covered. After our conversation with the youth safety and cyberbullying expert, a number of you shared your thoughts. And one user said, quote, I believe bullying is at its highest rates in high school. Social media could be a monster. Someone else said cyberbullying is a sign to keep kids from spending too much time on devices. They say it's the reason why I keep my kids from being wired and stay busy with them in the non-digital world. It's crazy. A few of you also shared your thoughts on Taylor Swift's three-night stand at Hard Rock Stadium. Some viewers were over her and could not wait for it all to be over. Terry Hannaway wrote, bye-bye, Swifties. But Janet McBride pointed out how South Florida benefited from Swift's concerts. She said, complain all you want. She's bringing in revenue to Miami and is giving more money to help Florida. We'll keep sending your comments and feedback to CBS Miami at CBS.com. That does it for this week's episode of Miami Life. Remember, you'll see us every Thursday for Miami Life at 630 on the stream. You can also watch Miami Life episodes on demand on our YouTube channel. I'm Jim Barry. Thanks for watching. See you soon.